that nothing happens by chance, that we are all here by divine appointment. I extend this to our viewing audience, that you tuned in because you too had a divine appointment. And as we come together this morning, I've loved this theme about the happiness advantage, the science of happiness, that there is a science of happiness that Dr. Scott Acor from Harvard actually majored in the science of happiness and did this wonderful PBS special. And today we're going up the spiral. We are spiraling upward. And that is one of our themes for Interface Spiritual Center Worldwide, that we are on the upward spiral and we are what? Going higher yet. We believe that, we know that, we embody that. And are we subject to the human condition? Yes, we are subject to the human condition. We have to make that all right with us. And people say, well, when you say that we're perfect, complete, and whole, you know, I know I'm not perfect. And I said, but there is an energy within you that is. There is a perfection within you that is. That if we cut ourselves, all the cells rush to that, that injury and begin uh, the energy of healing. So when we say about our, the perfection within us, we are talking about the God seed, the energy of the God particle, the opportunity to know the truth. And that when we go through our own challenges, that we extend ourselves to others and say, please do a spiritual mind treatment for me. And Dr. Ernest Holmes, who wrote the Science of Mind textbook, said that he called it a spiritual mind treatment because the, the whole prayer thing was like begging, bargaining, and beseeching an anthropomorphic god in the sky with a long white beard and long white hair with a little black book that said, mm, that's two, okay. Well, that is not a god that we believe in. We believe in a power, a presence, and energy. As within, so without. As above, so below. We believe in the all-inclusive energy that we choose to call God, we choose to call whatever father, mother, nature, universal mind, it doesn't matter what we call it, but to acknowledge that which is within us is greater than that which resides in the world. Spiraling upward is every time we fall down, we get up. Every time we look outside ourselves, we come within ourselves. Every time something happens where, where we're not feeling the highest and the best, when we come back to ourselves, we are spiraling upward. We are taking the, the information. Remember that the universe is composed of impulses of energy and information. And we're taking that information and we're using it for good in our life because there is a power for good in the universe greater than we are and we can use it. And it was interesting, uh, Reverend Trent Blanchard, who uh, just moved here from New York and he's getting organized. He is a professional organizer as well as a professional coach. And he came over on Thursday and we went through files and boxes and for five hours going through all of this. And we filled up my huge recycler. So I went next door to the guys next door and I got their recycler out because they didn't have it on the street. So we filled theirs up, we put it out on the street. Well, we still had other things. So we went across the street to David's and we filled his up. So, you know, with all of this purging and letting go, and releasing because so much is on computers now and on the internet that I don't need to be saving all of that from 40, almost 40 years back. It just emptied the files. And it was interesting. I would come across little letters and things. And I came across a letter from Kent, who was with us and, and Dennis's partner. And he said, oh, dear Dr. Sharon, I just love you so much. And, just so grateful, and I'm reading this to Trent, and I'm starting to cry a little bit, and saying, oh, I miss him. And Then I saw Danny, who was my assistant minister for 13 years in San Diego, who passed of AIDS, and I'm showing him this beautiful memorial that we did with his pictures, and it was such a beautiful tribute, and I'm reading that, and, and Trent is so precious. He goes, oh, that's so moving, and that's so lovely. And then I see something from my late husband, and I read this, and I'm, you know, I'm kind of tearful to going through this process. And as we, you know, the hours are passing, it's getting freezing. When you, I pull out my car because I had everything was redone, so it's like a room. 
when I pull out the car. If I, the car's in there, it's the garage, I pull it out, it's the extended office. So we're getting freezing, and I am freezing, and uh, we keep going because we're on a roll here. I'm crying, and I'm going through things, and I'm reading them to him, and he's very moved to, I mean, he didn't say, well, let's get on with it. You know, he was very caring and loving and said, I know you come across these things and it's so emotional. So th it's interesting, the emotional element uh, to our experience. And I got back in the house and I just could not get warm. I was freezing. I put the heat on to 80. I got in the bathtub. I was still freezing. That I better get over to the spa on Friday. So I'm at the spa and I'm in, you know, the hot sun and I'm in these rooms and I meet somebody that you know, comes to interfaith, and we're in a conversation, and I get into the dressing room, and I'm having an orange and an apple, and we have a really fun friend named Ardell, and she comes in, and she's got these darling little gold, they're wonderful little pear earrings, and she said, she took them off, she said, the Lord told me to get these to you, and I said, oh, they're beautiful, thank you, Ardell, they're just lovely, and she goes, and I went to this wonderful uh, the classic car reception and I brought a bunch of food. Here, here's some food. And I'm eating a banana and some other things. So we're talking and she goes out and I bite into the banana and as I'm biting into the banana my front tooth falls out. I'm eating a banana. I am not eating an apple or a carrot. I'm eating a banana, right? So I had just been to the dentist because when uh, I was 21 years old I went through the windshield and then the dashboard. I call it my breakthrough experience. I don't recommend it, but I did. It was a breakthrough. And while I was healing, and while I was uh, opening the space uh, for that healing, a charming old woman in her 80s came down to our apartment, and she gave me a book. And the book was Psychocybernetics. It was by Dr. Max Wilmaltz, who was a plastic surgeon, and also. He was into self-image psychology. And he also espoused as within, so without. Some people had plastic surgery, they'd look in the mirror, they'd still see the scar or whatever it was because this was their self-image. It was very fascinating. She gave me that book. I ended up teaching that at the university level. Now at 21 years old, she brought me that book. So I cracked all four front teeth in the, going through the windshield. So they had to, you know, they did this whole thing of doing the veneers and all of this. So I said to my doctor here in Palm Springs, I'm, you know, I've had these veneers a really long time. Uh, I've had these now for 12 years. I want you to really check them. So he's doing all the thing and he's doing some little stuff. I said, I just have this intuition about it. So really check it. And he said, I really did. So here on Friday night, my front tooth falls out. I have a memorial service to do the next day. I am a Leo. We're just vain. We're born that way, you know. And I, what do I say? I was born in Oklahoma. I don't want to look like I can't, you know, I, I, that I came from there. <laughs> so I am like, okay, Father, this, this is comical if it weren't so tragic. I have a memorial to do the next morning. So I call my dentist, his voicemail is full, I don't get the emergency number, it just goes, please leave a message. So I call back three times just, you know, hoping somehow, you know, against fate, please leave a message. So I call an agency and I say, I am a minister, I have a memorial service to do. By this time, I'm really cleansing, I'm blowing my nose, everything's draining, you know, I've got this emotional thing going on from seeing everyone's photograph and all the things they gave me. And I said, I have a memorial service to do tomorrow. So whatever you do, well, she's called every dentist in the Coachella Valley that will come in an emergency. They all said no. So I said, I need somebody at Saturday at 8 a.m. I'm putting it out there to the universe. And then her name's Veronica. She goes, okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. I said, I'm just knowing the truth about that. I'm doing all treatment and she's saying yes to me. And I said, and I just feel like you and I are partnering and we're going to get something done here. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So she comes on, she goes, no one's going to do it. And I've been calling and they just, you know, won't. But there's one dentist that's not part of the group agency. And I noticed that he does emergency service. His name is Dr. Samir in Palm Desert. Are you willing to go to Palm Desert? I said, I am willing to go to LA at this point. So I call the number and this lovely woman answers and she said, let me call Dr. Samir. She calls him. He said, yes, he'll meet me there at 8.30 because the memorial had to be there at 10.30. And he said, it's only going to take 20 minutes. 
It's a very simple thing. Well, when you're without the tooth, it seems like a huge thing. I mean, an absolute huge thing. So I meet him there, I tell him the whole story. I mean, he's just charming and wonderful. It's $150 just to walk in the door on a Saturday, but you know what? I told him, you know, I, my dentist doesn't usually, he doesn't do that on emergencies, he said, but you couldn't get in touch with him. I said, that's true, that is very true. So we had this exchange, and then off to the memorial service, and I am like blowing my nose, and my, you know, the tears are, are coming down from my eyes watering and all this. And I sat and I did a treatment, and I also talked to Mike, who called me, and I said, treat for me, and I've got these things going on, and I just need to know the truth about it. And, you know, it's, he's so broken up about his wife passing, and I want to be a beneficial presence. So I get there, and I sit down, and someone puts their arm around me, and they say, how's my favorite girl? And I look up, and it's our board president, Carl Key. And I said, I am perfect now. So I said, just treat for me that I get through this memorial service. Of course, if I start, you know, blowing my nose and everything, they'll think that I'm, you know, very emotional too, and that, you know, it's, it'll be fine. But I mean, it went impeccably. <coughs> Everyone was served. They came up and said it was the most beautiful memorial service they had ever heard, that I didn't like, quote, endless scripture. I talked about the energy of light within us that death is not extinguishing the light, it's turning off the lamp because dawn has come, that energetically, energy is neither destroyed nor created, beyond the reach of hands, yet ever in the heart, all the things that comforted me when my husband passed. And I said that as well. And then as the kids came up and shared, and everyone came up and shared, there was such a magic in the audience, such an energy in the audience. And I thought, we are spiraling upward. I mean, the truth is, God is getting me through this experience so that I am cleansing and I am going through my own experience. I got my tooth, I'm happy. I'm a happy camper, right? And what else is there? And so I get home and, and I really start cleansing and I'm cleansing so much. And the reason we call it a cleansing in our way of life is that when you say use the sacred I am and you say I am sick, the universe responds with you are sick. You're, we're using the sacred I am for a negative. But if we say, I am cleansing, on a DNA cellular level, the cells respond that we are cleansing and releasing anything that no longer serves us so that we can arise triumphant and victorious. So as I am cleansing, and, and Michael called, talked to Michael again, and we're treating and knowing the truth, and then I called my hairdresser and said, I just can't make it. I'm just really cleansing, and I just can't make it. Please pray for me. And they said, we will all pray for you. The whole salon will pray for you. We see you doing your Sunday service. We see it, we see it, we see it. So they're all praying, and I'm cleansing. And every time I felt that energy of really not feeling well, I say, I am perfect, complete, and whole. Every cell in my body temple is responding to this energy. God and I are the majority. Even if I didn't feel it, if I didn't feel like saying it, if I felt like, you know what, I said it anyway. Then I got in the bathtub and soaked and used Edgar Casey's Epsom salts, baking soda, and a few other things of my own that I put in there, and I just soaked, 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 and I sang, I am one with God, I am one with life, I am one with love, I am one with joy, I am one with health, I am one with wealth, I am one with you, you are one with me, we are one with God, God is all there is. And I sang that song as I was in the bathtub and cleansing. And this morning, you know, I still felt, you know, at, at three o'clock I woke up and I took another bath and I just did the same ritual. And I thought, I am spiraling upward. I am spiraling upward because I am releasing what no longer serves me. The emotional, and I speak all over the world on the molecules of emotion. The emotional uh, energy here was I saw all those letters and cards from people I've loved so much that aren't here anymore. I, and I went right into that vibrational missingness of, oh, and, you know, and had someone there with me to support me through that. And also I got totally chilled being in there and ignored that. So we can't ignore the messages from our body temple either. That's a message to say, turn on the heater, get something warmer on, or whatever. But we power through it so that we can come out on the other side. But the truth is, love is the strongest healing power in the universe. You can have faith. You can have hope, 
But if you have not love, you are a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. That we must have the love of self, each other, and ultimately the planet. And I saw a wonderful interview with Jean Houston. She is the mother of the human potential movement. She is amazing. She's a 75-year-old woman that's written 28 books. The Possible Human was a fabulous book. I saw her interviewed and she said, the two things that made the biggest difference in my life is when I was seven years old. The first one, my father was a comedy writer. We went and we saw Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy, his little puppet, right? Remember Charlie? And in fact, they're bringing that back on YouTube. And Candace Bergen said she used to be very jealous of Charlie, the puppet. And uh, Jean Houston and her father went over there and she said that Edgar was asking Charlie, what are the secrets of the universe? And he was responding with these amazing things about quantum physics. He was responding about the energy of oneness, the God particle. He was responding and her father said, Edgar, what are you doing? That isn't what I wrote for you. He said, I know, but Charlie has the secrets of the universe and he shares them with me. He goes, that's you. You're sharing through Charlie. He goes, I don't know where this information has come from, but I'm tapping into something I didn't even know existed. I'm tapping into universal energy and I'm finding out what the secrets of the universe are, why I'm, I am here, why I was created. This little so-called dummy is sharing the secrets of the universe. And I thought, wow, think in this day and age. Channeling, puppet channels, you know, uh, all the great masters of the universe. And they would flock to hear this puppet, wouldn't they? Yes, absolutely. So interestingly enough, she said, and then the second thing is that she was seven years old and she met Helen Keller. And she talked to their class and she said, are there any questions? And she said, why are you so happy? And she said, how can I not be? I'm alive. Spiraling upward, upward, upward. How can I, looks like I'm deaf and I'm mute. How can I not be happy? I am alive. And when we get it, that we are so blessed to be alive and that we go through our human conditions, we all do, but there's a power for good in the universe greater than we are, and we can use it. And I'm a living testament of that, because at three o'clock in the morning, I was really thinking, maybe I should call someone. And I did. I called God. God answered, and I'm here. I love you, and I am so grateful to be here with you. And what I know at the deepest level is what? We are going higher yet. Where are we going? Higher yet. Where? Higher yet. And so it is. God bless you.